All right, so we're going to do 2022 numbers five and six. So the slope field one, when you draw in your particular solution, it should look like that. The places you turn around should be where the horizontal slopes are. Um, how did it go? Good. Okay, that's worth one. So you do that, you get one point. Unless it's like super egregious, they should give it to you. Okay, so one point for that but it's one you can get. So there was one of those on the 2023 that we worked, right? And there's one on the 2022. So I don't know if you guys will get one or not. You'll have to let me know what happens. Oh, no, actually, let me keep that up there. All right. Well, I want to exact numbers that you have. When I say exact numbers, like the exact number of cases, would that like not work? So it's like, when I read the scoring guideline, it said, as long as you don't cross any slopes. So if you didn't go like this, and it said, as long as it went all the way to the edges, and as long as your turnarounds, like your turns happened where the horizontals were, it said that like those were the things that were in the scoring guidelines. You guys know you have access to the scoring guidelines, right? Like Google's a thing. If you Google AP Calc for your response scoring guidelines, you have access to all of them. If you want to read a whole lot of really passive aggressive uh, information, it has to look like this and it has to look like this. You know, you have access to all of those, okay? All right, letter B, write an equation. What two things do you need to write an equation? All right, the point and a slope. And I think they just give you the point, right? One comma two. Slope comes from derivative. All right, so let me look back up here at the beginning. Our Oh gosh, that's our derivative. <laughs> I forgot it looked like that. Okay, well, that's our derivative. We're gonna plug in one for X and two for Y. So it is gonna be one half, sine of uh, pi over two, because x is one there, and then square root of two plus seven is nine. Technically, you are allowed to leave it like that. However, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it down so I don't have to copy that all over again and again and again. What is sine of pi over two? Or let's start with where's pi over two on your unit up. So sine's the y value, that would be one. And the square root of nine is three. So this is three halves. But again, they can't fault you for leaving it like that. So put it all together. Your equation would be y minus two equals three halves parentheses x minus one. Um, you get a point for writing that equation. I feel like that's pretty doable. All right. Now, there was another part to part B. Um, what else does it say to do? Use the equation to, now, do you remember the one we did? It was on the 2023. And I think we wrote the equation at like five and then they wanted us to approximate two. And I was like, that's not very close. This one is though, we wrote our tangent line at X equals one. So approximating 0. 0.8 is like, that makes sense, sorry. So it'd be Y is approximately three halves and then plug in 0. 0.8 minus one. And then what do you stick at the end? So are you going to write this down with me? Oh, you already did it. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. All right. And then it's point for that. Cool. Do you feel like you would have gotten those ones? Yes. You'd be at three so far. And that's kind of what I was saying. Um, I feel like those mock exam questions are harder than like what the actual test is. I mean, would you agree? Disagree? I don't know. Your opinion is. All right, it is known that second derivative is greater than zero. What does that tell you? What does the second derivative tell you? Concavity. So second derivative is positive means the graph is concave up. So is that approximation that we just did an overestimate or under underestimate? Off to the side, if I draw something that's concave up, when you draw in your tangent line, oh, and I'm wearing my shirt today too. Actually, in this graph, uh, graph kind of concave up, whatever. Um, the tangent line is where? below the graph so we would say underestimate um so i don't know how we want to word that i would say underestimate because um second derivative is greater than zero so f of x is concave up yes Yep, they'll accept it. The only ones I wouldn't do is diff for differentiable. I'm not 100% sure about that, or con for continuous. I don't know if they'll take those or not. And don't put a plus sign to mean positive, right? P O S. Um, I N C is increasing, D E C is decreasing. Yeah, all of those. So it's just a point for that, but I feel like you'd get that. All right. And then here we go. 
solve the differential equation. I would recopy this. I know that seems a little silly, but just go ahead and recopy it so that you have it on your paper. So it's separate antiderivatives plus C, initial condition, and then solve for Y, which is just a whole big bunch of algebra. So what would you do to separate the variables? You want Y to go to the left and X to go to the right. Um, well, we just subtract this variable Y to separate. No, you can't subtract it because it's not being added. And you would divide it. Now, don't write this. It would look like that when you divide it over. But how should I write that instead? It should be Y plus seven to the what power? Perfect. Perfect. Y plus seven to the negative a half dy equals all the rest of that dx. You get a point for that. So if you separated it, you got a point. And if you wrote it as the one over square root y plus seven, you would get the point. So if you were nervous about like, I rewrote it, so I have to copy the whole thing over again. Um, but you could do that and make sure you get the point. All right, then we're going to do the antiderivatives. You have to add one to the power. So it's going to be y plus seven to the what? One half and then out front a two. Technically, there was a u substitution, but what's the derivative of one y? Well, it's just one, so don't worry about it. But pretend it was a three y. Out front, you would put a one third. If it was a seven y, out front, you would put a one seventh, okay? Foreshadowing for the one that we're about to do. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Leave a little gap right there for me. Cosine pi over 2x plus c. Now, if it was, again, 3x, you'd put a one third. If it was 8x, you would put a one eighth. Since it's pi over 2x, out, thank you. Out front, you need to put a two over pi. You're putting the reciprocal of that. Good job. Perfect. That might have been worth two. That was worth two. One for this antiderivative and one for this antiderivative. So if you got one or the other, you'd be at two points so far. You would have gotten the first one. And if you got one or the other of these, you would have gotten another one. All right. Now we're going to plug in our initial condition, which was what? Can you look back at the paper? And OK, so x is going to be 1, y is going to be 2. 2 plus 7, 9. Square root of 9, 3 times 2 is 6. Oh, and if you want to put your arrow, this is the step we're going to have to go back to. On this side, x is 1. Cosine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is up at the top. Cosine is 0, though, so that's nice. This entire thing goes away, and you just get that c is 6. It's a point for that. Um, and good news, because it came out to 0, if you missed putting this 2 over pi out front for the u substitution, you would still end up getting that because it went to 0 anyway, so it was kind of nice. All right, so we're going to recopy this line, um, except instead of plus C, we're going to put plus 6. Also, I would just cancel out these 2s here. Do you see how these 2s are going to cancel out? So negative 1 over pi cosine pi over 2x plus 6. And I want you to do as little writing as possible for this, because the more times you copy it, the more likely it is you're going to do a copy error. This is just some algebra. And actually, this one's not too bad. How do you get rid of the two? I want you to do this. It is not your problem. It is the grader's problem to figure out if it's right. You just need to write neatly enough for them to be able to read it. All right, then this one half means a square root. So to un so you're going to square the whole thing. Good. And then subtract seven. Now, I would rewrite it one final time just because you have all these slashes in here. But it's going to be this entire thing. minus seven, and it's a point for that final answer. Five, five, six, I'm just making sure I added it all up right. Let's see, seven, eight. Oh, and then nine was the writing it on the slope field. So what do you think you would have gotten out of that? Would you have gotten the slope field? The first one, how about these two, writing an equation and plugging in point A? Okay, so that's three. 
Do you think you would have remembered this means concave up? So under S, I feel like that's too, not too bad. That's four. And if you even separated it, you would have gotten five. You don't even think you would have separated it. Well, then you still would have got four, which is okay. All right. Again, I think your actual test is going to be easier than that mock exam, which is, you know, it's not bad. All right. Let's see if we can do number six before we run out of time here. Uh, this is particle motion. So it says particle P moves along for times bigger than zero. Oh, what did they give you for particle P? That's kind of weird because usually they give you velocity. So when you look at particle Q, for Q, they do give you velocity. So just be aware you're juggling a few different things. Um, but neither of the equations is too terrible. This is non-calculator. And then you have an initial condition for Q. So let's read what they want from us. Letter A, find the velocity of particle P. It's V of T. They just threw a P in there because there's particle P and particle Q. Um, how do you get from position to velocity? Derivative. Okay, so all we have to do is the derivative of this. What's the derivative of six? Nothing. Yeah, zero. You can write a zero if you want. Derivative of negative four e to the negative t. Well, it's itself, but what rule is in there? Chain rule. What's the derivative of negative t? Negative one. Technically, you can just leave it like that. But we're going to need that equation later on to answer a bunch of other stuff they're doing. So what is the way we can sort of clean that up a little bit? Yeah, 4e to the negative t. And I think that was only worth one. But I mean, yeah, you didn't have to do that much. So there you go. All right, letter B. Find a q of t, the acceleration of particle q. So they gave us velocity for q. We want acceleration. So again, we're going to do a derivative. Now, look here, and I'm just going to write on the paper. See how it's 1 over t squared? How else could you write that? Negative two. Good. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. You're good with your negatives. So your derivative, you're going to bring down the negative 2. It'll drop to a negative 3. And again, technically, that's it. But we're going to need to use that to answer some more stuff. So let's clean that up a little bit. It would be negative 2 over t cubed. And it is a point for that. See how this is not so bad? This is an actual release test. It's not too terrible. That was OK. Now, there's another part for that. Find all times when the speed is decreasing. You have to look at both velocity and acceleration. Speeding up would be that they are same sign. Speed decreasing, so slowing down means opposite signs. OK, so I'm going to make a number line for velocity, a number line for acceleration. A lot of times they'll just ask you at a particular number, and you can just plug in that number. But this says for all times bigger than 0. So actually, I'm going to start this at 0 here. And do you remember doing this when we put in our pluses and minuses? You guys were good at it. All right, so let's look at velocity for Q. That's what they gave us, velocity for Q. Let me just look at this one here. When you square a number, it will be positive. So this is going to be positive all the time. Great. And then the acceleration is this one that we just found. Now, we don't have negative times, so you're only plugging in numbers bigger than zero. So you know a, a positive number cubed is going to be positive, but then it's negative. So this is going to be negative all the time. It's almost one of those things where it's so simple, it feels more confusing. Do you feel like you missed something? They love to do that because then you'll second guess yourself. All right, so we would say speed is decreasing, or you could say slowing down. Those mean the same things. Um, for what times? Yeah, you can write t greater than zero, or you can write zero to infinity. Either way, um, speed is decreasing uh, on that time because v q of t and a q of t are opposite signs there. Yes, yeah, so you want you just want to write opposite signs. Yes, exactly. Because then you can still get the point even if like this part wasn't right. Um, and I think it was just, oh, you get a point. What the scoring guideline says is you get a point for considering the signs. So if you wrote anything about velocity and acceleration being positive and negative, you get a point. And then you get a point for the answer. If you don't put a number line at all, but this is all correct, 
you get both like retroactively because your answer is correct. Does that make sense? So like you'd get both. All right, so what are we at so far? Four points? Go us. All right, let her see. Go ahead and read that while I'm folding this paper back. What is C asking for here? Okay, that's where we're gonna need that initial condition. So where did particle Q uh, start? One, two, okay, so it starts at two, so it's gonna be two plus what? It will be an integral from one to wherever to T, and then inside of there, you're gonna put, yeah, your, yes, your velocity. Um, you can put T to the negative two, DT. Technically, these should be two different letters, so you could maybe make one of them X. They won't mark that wrong, though. If your answer ends up correct, you'll be fine, all right? Believe it or not, it was a point for using the initial condition. So if you wrote two plus bananas, you got a point. And then it's a point for that integral, like setting it up. Don't actually write the word bananas. You get that I'm being silly, right? But if you used the initial condition, that's what I'm saying, always write something. Cause if you even have anything in there that's right, you can get a point. All right, so now we're gonna do the antiderivative. This is gonna be two plus, all right, you have to add one to the power. So it's gonna become negative one. And that means in front of that, you need a negative such that, one to T, so this is gonna be two plus upper boundary minus lower boundary. So if you plug in T, it's just that. I would write it as negative one over T. It's not wrong to just recopy what's there. I just don't like negative exponents. I like to fix them at the, as a personal preference. All right, and then if you plug in one, you just get negative one. And it's a point for that. You can just leave it like that. Did you say cute? It's cute. It's cute. All right. And then last part, it says as time goes to infinity. Ooh, what is this? Good job. Limits. All right. Which particle will eventually be farther from the origin? You just want position. It's just where is it? How far from the origin did it get? So you're going to do limit as t goes to infinity of position for each of them. So what's the position formula for particle P? I think they just flat out gave us that one. Yeah, six minus four E negative T. And then we're gonna do limit as T goes to infinity for the position of the other one, which was our answer from part C. Now I don't love that because if you couldn't get through part C, then you can't do part D and I dislike that, but... Um, Let's clean this up. This would be plus one, right? So this would be three plus a negative. So three minus one over T. Do you guys get how I put that together? Okay, just making sure we're all together. So we're gonna do as time gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That is a negative exponent. So really you can, um, well, let me erase. I'll put that in the denominator. It would be like this. Do you see what I'm saying? This is a negative exponent. So as time gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this denominator gets astronomic, astronomically large, okay? What does that mean this portion is gonna go to? Zero, so six minus zero, which is six. Again, if the denominator gets huge, you end up with like one trillionth, which is like, you know, a teardrop in the ocean. It's just super tiny. And the exact same thing's gonna happen here is this denominator goes to infinity, gets really, really, really big. This portion goes to zero, so you get, Three. Um, so what the scoring guideline says is you get a point for one or the other. So as long as one of these was correct, you'll get it. So actually, even if you couldn't get part C and you couldn't do this one, if you even did that first one, you would get that point. Always write something. You can always get a point out of something. All right. Um, so which one was which? This was P and this was Q, right? So which one is further from the origin? All right. P is further from the origin um, because six is greater than three. I feel like they would still give it to you if you said P is farther from the origin, but the scoring guidelines said it that way. So, uh, well, I mean, they were even more wordy. I'm kind of condensing it, but. Um, no, cause you wrote it here. But if you wanna be really specific, P is farther from the origin 
um, as time goes by, or I mean, because it's time going out to infinity. So you, or you could say the word eventually, um, or however you want to word that. Did I add it up to nine? I also want to make sure I gave you all the points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. What do you think you would have got out of that one? The first one, I think, if you just realized you had to take a derivative. The second one, this is just a derivative. If you struggled with these two, fine. Speeding up, slowing down is hard. If you wrote two plus anything, you'd have gotten that one. So like, 